Good morning, YouTube. Uh, this is Minister Paul in Northern California at 8.25 a.m. on September 21st, 2012. With the Holy Spirit's help and God's mercy and grace, uh, I want to give you this message I received while praying this morning. First of all, I thank God for giving me another day of life. It's a gift. You know, we, we face choices every day on when we wake up on how we're going to react to things and, and how we're going to handle the challenges of this world as it grows more deceitfully wicked and evil. When I find myself trying to do good, it is evil is present all around me. The Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 7. And I think it's been like that since the beginning of time. Excuse me. And so, of course, what do we do? We pray. As I was praying... God gave me this message, and I'm going to share it with you, and, and I know it will bless you, because that's how the Holy Spirit works. So I'm just going to tell you this story about a, someone that was wrongly accused. Um, happened a long time ago, and I know I've shared a lot of stories on here, but... You know, this person, he, he had a, the, the perfect home. Really didn't have anything at all wrong. I mean, the perfect, perfect life. Perfect house, perfect father. I mean, everything was done for him. Had it made. But for some reason, he, he got a call from a friend who was a long way away in another country. And he left everything. Everything. To go help his friend. And, and he went to help his friend, you know, like when I was in the Navy, we were, we were warned in certain countries, they, they have certain customs and traditions, and even religions that you got to be careful not to break. <laughs> Before you pull into every port, every country has its own traditions and customs, and if you can break them, like for instance, the Philippines is no longer a a port for the United States Navy, but when I was in, it was, and, and you know, you got caught with one marijuana seed, just one seed, this is how the world's changed, you, you went to jail for a long time, and those jails weren't no joke, <laughs> you probably weren't going to be hurt again for a long time, that's why Shore Patrol was driving around everywhere, watching your back. so you had to be careful when you go into these different areas, you know, but this, this, this person, they knew what they were getting into and they signed up for it anyway because they loved their friend so much. They loved them more than anything. They loved them more than they loved themselves. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? So he goes over there and they immediately just start questioning everything he does. You know, he's just like, why are you here? It, every answer he gives is wrong, and and even his friend that he's there, he, he left everything to help. His his friend is even wondering, what did you come here for? It's just it was sad. I mean, they 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 actually were trying to set him up to 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 get him in jail. Falsely accused, he said he was falsely accused. He didn't do it. You know, and, and he sticks to that truth to this day that he was falsely accused. But he, you know, he went to go help his friend out because he loved him. And so they they set a trap. They they framed him. They uh, they beat him up and k 
kicked him and I mean he was just bruised all over his body and nobody really helped him they just watched it would seem like he was in a foreign land with no help I mean he could have he could have called he, he could have called a lot of people just um, without going into details he could have called a lot of people but he didn't call anybody he just took his beating he took his beating for his friend and uh, they kept trying to set him up on these false charges and he kept somehow avoiding them and dodging them and finally he said you know it's time and you know they struck him in the face and kicked him and threw him in one of those jails where you're never seen again and uh, he was innocent and he died he died for his friend in a foreign country falsely accused and innocent framed everybody that was supposed to be his friend abandoned him denied him I met him actually met him later when I was 15 His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's what he did. That's what he did for me and that's what he did for you. Wrongly accused was the message God gave me this morning. So let's go to this word. Let's talk about the blood of Jesus. Let's see what the world has to say about the powerful redeeming blood of Jesus, its salvation power, its healing power, you know. See, I was raised up in a church when I was 15. They didn't tolerate nonsense. There'd be some grandma about 83 years old would just get to, to huffing and puffing and walking down the front of the aisle and was just someone would get out of line and get out of order they didn't have zombies back then <laughs> it just some grandma with no fear with the blood of Jesus pumping through her would just get this the Holy Ghost would come upon her and she would just walk up to that person in the front row that was out of order and that was mocking and laughing and full of demons and she would just go up there and lay hands on him and say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I rebuke these demons and I command them to leave and they would leave and that person would be set free and just raise their hands up and shout to, to the Lord with thanks and thanksgiving and, and people would run to this church to be set free through the blood of Jesus that was shed and I ask myself sometimes, where'd that church go? The church that operated in the fivefold ministry, the church that where everybody got along and you were welcome to come in if you were tired or sick or hungry or poor or thirsty, sick or just got out of prison. Come on in. Everybody come on in. It's free. You got demons, we can handle that. You sick, we can handle that. You hungry, we can handle that. This church can handle everything because we got the blood of Jesus. Where'd that church go? Well, in my life, <laughs> it's right here in this house. So let's talk about the blood of Jesus. But let, let's, can I just just do a little short teaching today you, you've seen me laugh you've seen me cry you've heard all my testimonies 
You've seen me prophesy. You've seen my visions and my dreams. Can I just talk about the blood of Jesus today? Would that be okay? You know, the Holy Word records that Jesus bled seven times. I find that fascinating. Seven. You know, and each time he bled is significant. I mean, if you if I had like two hours, I could tell you that every time he bled was very significant for you in a certain way. You know, he bled in the in the Garden of Gethsemane. Can you imagine being so stressed out? They're coming to kill you. You know what death's like because you raised Lazarus from the dead. You saw him come out in grave clothes. And you know, they want to put you in those grave clothes. You have this, <laughs> you're the son of God. You already know what they have planned for you. Your own people that you've discipled are sleeping. There you stand, praying, Lord, if it be your will. Is there any other way? Can you take this cup from me? They're about to put me in those grave clothes. But before that, they're going to beat me and scourge me. And I ain't done nothing wrong. I'm falsely accused. I haven't sinned. Done everything right. I'm being betrayed by someone that I called and walked with and trusted. It's going to betray me with a kiss. And then they're going to beat me. They're going to frame me. They're going to drive nails in me. I'm going to die. Is there any other way? But nevertheless, not my will, but your will, Jesus said. And he began to come so stressed out that it, it records that he literally sweated blood. You know, that, 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 and that's physically possible. Talk about stress levels. You ever stress so bad you sweat blood? Jesus did. The second time he bled was when they yanked on his beard. And you can, you can check all these references. Triple check them. Just talk about the blood of Jesus today, you know. There's redemption power in it. There's healing power in it. There's freedom in it. Nothing can stand against the blood of Jesus. Nothing. And he bled for you. The second time he bled was when they pulled his beard. You know, you saw me grow a beard the other day. You know, have you ever had a beard ripped so hard? That you literally bleed from it while they're smacking you in the face. You've been wrongly accused. You've been framed. You've been betrayed. You're being set up for something you didn't do. Wrongly accused was the message I got this morning. I want you to identify this morning with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Because that's, that, that's, that's, you know, as we uh, approach the day of atonement, is that blood that allows us to be free, to be healed, to be delivered. To receive eternal life. It would be like a female I guess. Having her hair pulled so hard. That literally it came up by the roots. And your head literally bled from 
so much being removed that your scalp bled. I would hurt. And you hadn't done nothing wrong. But tell the truth. The third time he bled, you know, they put him on a, laid him down. They took a cat of nine tails, and, you know, the, these whips. They had several different pieces of bone, and I don't know if you know this or not, but it wasn't just a whipping, but it, it you know, it, it had pieces of, of it that when it hit your back, it literally tore your flesh out. Just beating them, beating them, beating them. He done no wrong. He just told the truth. He left heaven. He left heaven and came down here. And as he's getting beat over, bam, bam. And he's just pulling his skin out, bam, bam. He's holding on to that thing. And he's thinking of you. He's been betrayed by Judas. He already knows Peter's going to deny him. But he has a plan. So he keeps taking it. You know, it, bam. That's for, that's for Paul. <laughs> Bam! As for Paul's wife. Bam! As for Paul's son. Put your name in there. You know, the fourth time he bled, it's talking about the blood of Jesus. Is that okay today? We talk about the blood of Jesus. Precious blood of Jesus. Precious Holy, my Savior. They put this, they, they mocked him. He hadn't done anything, like I said, wrongly accused. They made this crown to mock him as a king. They put thorns in it. These, these thorns, you go to Israel, you'll see these thorns are like this big. They make this this crown of thorns. You ever you ever just been stuck by a little thorn by trimming a rose bush or something and how bad how bad that hurts? No, these were like this. They literally shoved it down on his head so bad that it pierced his forehead and his his side and it's just he's taking this pain for me, you know, and for you. It hurts so bad, it just begins to draw blood all around. That's his crown, you know. This is this is the this is what he gets for coming down here to save us. His betrayal, wrongly accused, set up and framed. You can't even imagine. We hear these stories of, of people in the news that did 20 years for a rape they didn't commit and they get out and they're like man I'm free I lost 20 years of my life no <laughs> it doesn't even compare to this this savior this messiah who left heaven. there's no comparison no one will ever repeat what he did he left heaven and came down here and then the fifth time the gospel records That they took his his hands. A lot of people think, you know, when they see a picture of the cross, that they 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 they, they put the the nails through your palm, but that's not how they crucify, because there would be nothing to support, you know. That they put the nail right here. Could you imagine a, a, a nail about that long? It's got to not only go through your whole wrist here, but it's got to stick you to the wood too. It's pierced. Both of them. Nailing 
it in. Just bam, bam. For nothing. Nothing. Wrongly accused. Set up, framed, and betrayed. Denied. Disciples won't pray for him. Judas betrayed him. He didn't do anything wrong to Judas. I don't read anywhere where he attacked Jesus and condemned him for being a betrayer. I don't read anywhere in the gospel where he once confronts Judas and rebukes him and all this stuff that we see in the world today. This wicked, evil world. Oh, he didn't do that. He held his peace. For you, held his peace. And in the sixth time, it was in his feet. You know, they, they put his feet together like that, and they took one big long nail, and they drove it through both feet right into the wood. Bam. It wasn't just one hit. Instant and over with, like a, them, you know, uh, hitting you in the face or getting a shot. It was a bam, 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 bam. Now he's stuck on this cross, nailed to it. Done nothing wrong. And he realizes they're killing me. They're going to kill me and I. <laughs> Why? They're the ones I'm dying for. I left heaven for this. I could call down, don't they understand? I'm the son of God. I created all this. I could call legions of angels to just destroy all of you. And walk away from this right now if I wanted to. Bam! Bam! That's for Paul. Bam! That's for Paul's wife. Bam! That's for you. And as if that isn't enough, in the seventh time, you know, he's thirsty. I mean, he says, you know, I thirst. You ever been thirsty? I mean, like right now, you see me drinking tea. I drink a lot of tea. Can you imagine being up there bleeding to death? It was it wasn't much blood left. They'd already beat most of it out of him. But what blood he did have left, he needed to live. And he's thirsty and his mouth's all dry and he's just like, man, you know, I, I gave everybody everything they needed. Anytime anybody wanted water, I just went around doing good and healing them all and laying hands on the sick and the blind guy. It's pictured, man, didn't I heal the blind guy? And, the, and you know, what about the woman who touched me? Where's she at? You know, the woman who, who, who touched the hem of my garment, my healing virtue went through her, you know. Oh, yeah, it's for her that I'm dying. So the gospel records that a soldier takes a sword on the seventh time, no, seventh time, and he pierces his side, and, and it records that water and blood came out. You know, he's basically out of blood at this point. His heart burst. I mean, if you really did some research and into crucifixions, his heart literally burst and exploded in water and blood gushing out. You know, I showed you that heart yesterday. My wife made that broke. Jesus died of a broken heart, wrongly accused and betrayed and mocked. King of the Jews. Crown of thorns, bled seven times. In Luke twenty three, 
Luke 23 verse 34 this is what he says after all that Father forgive them for they know not what they do and then they parted his raiment and cast lots over his clothes so he had to fulfill prophecy Father forgive them What a God. What a God. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with him, deriding him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. And if he be the Christ, the chosen of God, which he was, wrongly accused, betrayed, and denied. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. Vinegar. You ever drank vinegar? And saying, if thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And he could have. And a superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. It says, this is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. He was. He was. But the other answered and rebuked him, saying, Does, Watch this. Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? In other words, don't you fear God? Where it's not about us dying here. It's about where we're going to go. We're condemned. wrongly accused see they 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 done things to be up on that cross Jesus he done nothing they didn't get no spear in the side or their beards pulled no crown of thorns on their head but Jesus 41 says, And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. He's done no wrong. He's wrongly accused. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. See, that's faith. He saw something in Jesus. And I see something in Jesus that's changed me. It's given me mercy and grace to continue to press on. Sometimes, you know, people put false reports on me and attack me and my wife. And we press on. Thought I'd just remind you a little bit of why. Today. And Jesus said unto him, verse 43, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. 46 says, And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. See, we're spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the goats. He, he gave up his spirit. He died. Now when this interpreter saw what was done, he glorified God, saying certainly this was a righteous man. Yeah, they killed him anyway, though, wrongly accused. And I thank God today for Jesus Christ and his blood. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know who you are, but Jesus does, and he didn't die just for me, he died for you, in Luke 22 in closing, 
I want you to listen to this. And we'll start in uh, verse 14 of Luke 22. And I'll put links if you want to read them. It's up to you. I, I'm just sharing my love of my Savior Jesus Christ, the anointed Messiah. What he, how, how I relate to the, the power of his blood. What it means to me. It's more than just a story. It's a lifestyle. Fourteen said, when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles were with him. Twelve? You mean Judas? You mean the one that's going to frame him for thirty pieces of silver? And put him through all that that I just described? And I can't even describe it in a worthy enough manner to even touch a tenth of what he felt and went through in his heart. And in his body, broken and bruised for you. Whether you're my friend or whether you're my enemy, whether you support me or whether you condemn me is irrelevant. When we talk about the blood of Jesus, it applies to all who are willing to receive its power and redemption. Whether you even know him or not. This, this blood transcends time. It speaks. The blood speaks. It's continuing to speak. 2,000 years later after that happened, it still speaks in all power and authority. And it calls you and says, come unto me. Come unto me. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the light. I'm the only way to get out of this mess that you see coming upon this world. Come before it gets too dark. Come call on me. That's why I went through all that for this very moment to, for you to come to me and receive salvation, to receive your healing, to receive your deliverance. I don't know what you're going through today, but what he went through is enough to get you through it. You may be surrounded by a traitor. You may be surrounded by someone. Let's look at two of the people that it says 12. One of them's going to betray him. The other one's going to deny him not once, but three times. But is he sitting there judging him? Or condemning him? Or rebuking him? No, he's, he's going to break bread with him. What a world we would live in if everybody would be like that. With brotherly love and compassion. That's what heaven's going to be like. No more of this hurt no more of this pain no more of this judgment no more death no more crying no more waking up miserable sometimes can't wait that's why I endure and, and make these videos in the hopes that maybe I can reach just one person that can be up there with me. Just one. Just one. You know, I set a goal and I continue to pursue it of 2,000 souls. But I can't do it without Jesus. I don't even have my note. He was wrongly accused. And he's sitting at these table with these twelve. In Luke twenty two, fifteen he says, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He desired to have this last meal with them. But you know why? It's called love. What a love that is, huh? What a love to sit with the 12 people you've discipled. You don't think he knew Peter was going to deny him? He told him he would. You don't think he knew that Jesus, Jesus was going to betray him? The gospel records that, that Satan had already entered Judas. But does he sit there at the table and just totally just 
smack Judas or throw stones at Judas or judge Judas or condemn him. No, let's read. What a love. You just heard what he went through. Let's go back and see what he was doing before that. He's sitting at his table with these twelve. And Judas is there. And I, he desired to eat this meal before I go suffer. Suffer? That's putting it lightly, isn't it? 16 says, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. About ready to go die. Remember Lazarus coming out of the tomb? Dead. That's what they want to do to me and I've done no wrong. And One of you is going to betray me. One of you will doubt. Think about it. This is, this is his crew. One of you will betray me. One of you will doubt me. One of you will deny me. But I love you anyway. I love you so much I'm willing to die for you. Be beat for you. Bleed seven times for you. Now watch. In 21. Luke 22, 21. He said, But behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me at this table. The one who's going to put me through all that suffering sitting right here at this table. That's all it says. He didn't make a video about him. He didn't write a book about him. He didn't put his name up at the table for everybody to see so they could throw darts at it. They didn't all jump and dogpile on Judas and start beating him like they do on YouTube. No, they didn't do that. Something's wrong with this world, saints. Well, we can't even sit down at a table together after everything Jesus did to bring love into this world. Something's wrong. So they began to inquire among themselves which of them that, it, that would do such a thing. Then they start talking about who's going to be the greatest. And Jesus must be looking around. What do you mean the greatest? But he still, he holds his peace. Thirty-one says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. He's warning Peter, this is your future. Satan wants to kill you. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Because I pray for thee, he says, that their faith fail not. Read that. I'm going to read that again. 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as we. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. How many people here are praying for this ministry that our faith don't fail? We're praying for you, enemies and friends. We make no distinction. We're all in this together. And Peter, he says, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And you know, he did. He kept his word. Peter did go to prison and to death. Matter of fact, he was crucified upside down after he denied him three times. He didn't count himself even worthy enough to be crucified in the manner Christ was. Crucify me upside down, he said. So 
in 44 you can read it says in being in agony he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was as if it were great drops of blood falling down from the ground you know when they're sitting at that table if you read the gospels Matthew Mark and Luke and John you will find that he just simply told Jesus Judas you know he knew he was gonna betray him he didn't make a big deal about it he just said whatever you're gonna do do it quickly Judas just departed now here comes Judas in verse 48 coming up with them with a kiss It's real easy for me to judge Judas right now. That's our human nature, but not Jesus. Jesus said unto him, Judas, you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And they took him into custody. And the rest is forever history. So as you go and spend your day today, it's only 9 a.m. out here. What does that blood mean to you? How do you treat the 12 people sitting at your table? How do you treat those that betray you? How do you treat people who wrongly accused you and talk about you behind your back and call you a liar? Especially those in the body of Christ who've been blessed enough to know who Jesus is as the world watches you how do you treat your brothers and sisters well you can say one thing but your actions speak louder than words I know how Christ did it and I know how much it cost him but he's not bleeding anymore. He's the king of kings and he's the lord of lords. And he said and he said behold I give you power to tread on serpents and nothing shall by any means harm you. Nothing. You'll have power to cast out demons and you'll have power to heal the sick raised the dead and freely you've received it freely give but you gotta always remember that that came at a great cost I bought you with my own blood and that's where the power comes from the blood he shed those seven times on the cross so the next time somebody comes against you or mocks you or falsely accuses you or you feel evil come around you or a demon or like last night I'm praying over my wife and you say I plead the blood of Jesus now you know what you're pleading because it's not on that stained cross if you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior it pumps through you he, he abides inside of you when you say, I plead the blood of Jesus, you don't have to go back 2,000 years and picture this bloody cross. It simply is right here inside you, alive. His blood speaks. It's hard to wrap your mind around this Jesus who transcends time and space. But he's coming again to receive you unto his own. That, that where he is, you may be also. And until that day, I'm going to keep pressing on. I'm going to keep making videos. I'm going to keep encouraging others to pick up your cross and follow him. Because it's going to be worth it. My mom told me one thing, you know. 
and she had about three weeks to live. She said, you know, son, in 2007, in October, she said, you know, son, going into the ministry is going to cost you everything. I wrote it down. I wrote down what she was saying because she was coming in and out of a coma. But she said it'll all have been worth it in the end. Hallelujah. That's why I don't frustrate the grace of God. I'm living in grace. I don't, I don't let these things attack me or hinder me. Or, I just rebuke them. Otherwise, Christ died in vain. I wake up every morning and I refocus on what Jesus did for me and how he called me and, and, and accounted me worthy. Like the guy on the cross, he said, have you no fear of God? Where's the fear of God? And my goal is to reach somebody who don't know Jesus. And say, you know, he did all that for you too. If you step upon this video. You can, you can be with him in paradise. Or you can be condemned forever to darkness. He did everything. All you got to do is choose. I choose Jesus today. I choose to forgive my enemies today. I pray for my enemies today. And it's my hope somehow that through my faith that God will strengthen me to put out a message of encouragement that he's done everything for you. And that this somehow blesses you to refocus, rededicate if you must. Stop striving with this world. This is just not yours. Put on a kingdom mindset. Realize everything that you're trying to do in your own power, in your own might. Was already done on the cross. That's why in Philippians 4.13 it says, I can do all things. Yes, you can do all things. Through Christ. Who strengthens me. Well, thank you for your time today. Whether you love me or hate me or don't even know me, I'll pray for you. Jesus is real and he's returning. Some of you will falsely accuse me. Some of you will hate me. Some of you will judge me. Some will condemn me. But I pray for all of you. That's the life of a servant. Jesus Christ, when he came down, he said, I didn't come down here to, to be served. But to serve. And he gave all. And if that's what God requires of me, then that's what I'm going to do. Till I'm either taking my last breath and enter into his presence or I hear a trumpet blow and I'm forever with him I'm going to keep pressing in pressing in for my wife my son my sister my brother and my father and for you too God bless